The purpose of a brand valuation is to attribute income to a brand and give it a value. So what income does a brand generate for a business? There are a number of different ways of calculating the revenue attributable to brands, but the one that we're using in our study is to imagine that the brand owner doesn't own the brand and has to borrow it from a third party brand co and pay a license fee for the privilege. So, for example, paying 3% of turnover for the use of that brand. We apply those percentages across all future turnover and we get a stream of revenue which, when it's um, brought back to a net present value, represents the value of the brand to that business. Since Brand Finance set up in 1996, we've actually been attributing credit ratings to brands, very similar to the kind of credit ratings that Standard & Poor's would attribute to companies. So our credit ratings range from D, which would be the worst, to AAA+. And what we do, just like a rating agency, is to look at a, a wide range of benchmarks of the performance of the brand, uh, rank them against all competitors, and then give an overall rating. So it's extremely strong to have a AAA or a AAA+. It's the sort of thing you would associate with a brand like Vodafone. Uh, and then lesser brands, either in individual countries or in a, in, in a very competitive position, might be down at B or, or D or whatever, whatever it might be. It's a very good indicator of the future earnings potential and the revenue generating capacity of the brand. So it's an extremely important measure. The main trends in the Telecom 500 this year uh, can be broken into two or three pieces. First of all, there's increased competition at the top end amongst the major networks. So Vodafone used to have a fairly free run as a global uh, operator brand, but is now being given a pretty heavy run for its money by the likes of Orange, T-Mobile, Telefonica. So at that end, there's a lot more competition to be the global network brand. Uh, you then get at the regional level mini Vodafones or mini oranges uh, like MTN in Africa, Etisalat in the Middle East uh, and so on. So they're, they're each trying to create their own network in their region. And then thirdly you see uh, developing world brands going through the roof. So China Mobile, uh, Oi in Brazil, some of these uh, individual brands in individual countries are growing very rapidly, particularly in China. Whether Vodafone remain at number one really depends on the performance of Chinese operators, in my opinion. So far, they have really been domestic players and they've dominated the Chinese market with government support. And that contrasts very starkly with the position in somewhere like India, which is an equally big market, but they have proliferated the number of brands. So it, it's a dogfight and no one is particularly big. In China, the government has helped to build uh, local Chinese brands, which are now global in scale, even though they largely are only in China. The real question is, will those Chinese brands become major regional players in Asia and Asia Pacific? Could they become major players on a world scale? My guess is that it would be difficult, but they will certainly be trying to do it, just as Chinese brands are trying to do the same thing in a lot of other categories. The reason that O2 uh, may have fallen back is because it's largely in very competitive static markets which have not shown much growth for some time. Swisscom is a fantastic brand, but it's in a market which is pretty much ex-growth unless there's a huge new development. Uh, it's a very static market, whereas the real growth is coming in places where mobile penetration is still relatively low but growing very fast. The one thing which might change it is the whole issue of data. So we're moving away from voice very rapidly to other forms of uh, telecom services, both for business and for entertainment. It could be that in the next few years we will see uh, another spurt of growth in the developed markets. For the purposes of our study in telecoms, we actually break several different segments. We have handset providers, we have infrastructure providers and we have service providers. 
and they are all quite distinct as business types from the operators. So we have one list which is operators and some, some are fixed line and some are mobile, but increasingly they're merging together, but that's in one box. In the other three boxes, there are some players that are doing extremely well, like Cisco in the service provision side. The really interesting battleground, I think, is in the handset area, where uh, not so long ago, Nokia was the leader. Then it looked as though uh, BlackBerry was the uh, poster boy for the industry. And in the last two or three years, Apple has knocked them all out of the park. And the real question in the next year or two will be, does Apple continue to outperform everybody else or will the rest, including Samsung, be able to fight back? I think the jury's still out and in the stock market seems to believe that Apple can do no wrong. Their stock price has hit an all-time high recently, shows no signs of going backwards and that's a vote that the markets believe Apple will continue to outperform the other handset providers. Thank <music> you.